Helpful Smiles Live. I'm Stacey Tandon with HSTV, and I'm so excited for you guys to be here today. I'm joined by Jen Blazer, who I'm wearing a blazer today, <laughs> um, a Hy-Vee dietitian, and she is going to share with us some great tips on cooking smarter, not harder. Um, Jen, how are you today? Doing great. Thanks awesome. for having me. Awesome. So what are, what are we going to get started with? So first, so I always like to bring up my plate. So okay. as a dietitian, you know, we're focused on eating healthy. Sometimes that gets a bad name, but I love my plate because my plate makes cooking smarter, not harder, easy. So this replaced the food guide pyramid that so many of us are familiar with. I remember that. Kids that are watching at home, I know you've seen this in schools. So this makes eating easy because we eat off of plates. So what better way to model how we should eat than by using a plate? So the basic concepts are very basic. We want to fill half of our plate with fruits and vegetables and half of our plate with our grains and our protein. And with protein, we're focusing on lean protein options. And with grains, we want to try to make those grains whole grains at least half of the time. Now for the kids at home, they're probably saying something's missing from this my plate. We are missing the little cup for dairy. So dairy is absolutely important as well. But so many great things can be said about this my plate method. Okay. So like that looks a little smaller. That looks more like this, which is like a salad plate. It just feels maybe a little smaller than what we're used to eating dinner on. Absolutely. So our plate size has grown exponentially in the last several years, but this would be considered a salad plate to most people. But one of the basic concepts we talk about as dietitians is portion control and everything fits in moderation. So portion control is key to that. And by using a smaller plate, you can do several things. One of the great things, it tricks your brain into think thinking that that plate is still full. So you don't feel like you're missing out. And it, there's just so many great benefits to the my plate. Okay, cool. So you're going to talk a little bit about how to use that as we're making up some fun recipes yeah. today, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so cool. We're going to use rotisserie chicken. Um, it's one of my favorite protein options. It's super easy, super convenient. You can find it in the grocery store already warm so you can just take it home and you've got dinner warmed up ready to go you can find it cold and you can even find it shredded up ready to go okay um, um, like i don't have to get my hands dirty no absolutely you okay. can buy it already shredded ready I, to go i do like it when it's warm though like this yeah. it makes it very convenient yeah, for sure so for you guys that are following along with us at home if you have any questions feel free to put them in the chat um i'll be checking it periodically to make sure that your questions get answered by jen um, she's the expert here. So anything that you that you want to ask her from a dietitian perspective or about what she's doing or any techniques, please ask away. So one of the things that can shy people away from rotisserie chicken is not knowing what to do with the rotisserie chicken once you get it out of the package. So it's definitely easiest to work with when it's warm. So if you buy a cold one, you can always leave it in the microwave for a couple minutes. Um, this one is got is still warm. So we're going to show you guys how at home how to deconstruct this rotisserie chicken and make it real easy for you. And we are using the whole rotisserie chicken for today. So we're going to mix up that white and dark meat. It's okay to consume some of both. Remember, we're keeping things in moderation. So when the bird is still warm, it's really easy to pull those legs right off. You can see how easily they just pull right apart. Yeah, you weren't kidding about keeping it warm. Yeah. That would be a little yeah. difficult if it's cold. <laughs> so I like to make sure I utilize all the rotisserie chicken. Now, one of the not so great parts about rotisserie chicken is that skin. So I always remove the skin from my rotisserie chicken. So that makes it a little bit lab healthier what, yep. what's what is in the skin that we should be avoiding yep. it's going to reduce some of that cholesterol and those bad fats that we get from the skin and then you can very easily just peel that meat right off the bone so we're going to peel some of that off this is the dark meat and this is my husband's favorite part of the chicken it's always a fight between him and the kiddos to see who's going to get the legs <laughs> so speaking of kiddos you're kind of a big deal when it comes to helpful smile television um, you have your own show, right? Yeah. Um, so my daughter, Penelope, she's four. Um, her and I have a great time. We do Substitute Teacher Kids Edition, and she really enjoys doing that. My husband is a great cameraman for that show. Oh, very cool. <laughs> so Penelope, like, she's kind of your assistant on the show? Absolutely. Okay. She loves to cook. So all of the recipes we make 
are kid friendly and we always are focusing on that my plate method to make sure that we're getting a variety of different fruits and vegetables and showing people how easy it is to eat healthy and kid approved nice you have to let me know she's doing as good or worse of a job <laughs> she's got she's got quite the following. <laughs> <laughs> she definitely enjoys the show so, so this we, is pretty easy yeah so Obviously, we're hurrying a little bit through this process. We might take a little bit more time at home, but you can see how easy that meat is pulling right off of the bone. So just with the two legs, we already have a good amount of meat off of this rotisserie chicken. Yeah. So one of the other great things about these rotisserie chickens is you can make several meals with these rotisserie chickens. It's not just a one meal and done option. So from a budget friendly perspective, it's super convenient that way too. Nice. Now at home, the wings don't generally make it into the pile. Usually those are consumed before we get to the dinner table by one of the kids or my husband. <laughs> so we got the wings. They well, got part a good, of the fun. Kind right? Of preparing right. food, just getting a little, a little snack and preview before right. you have dinner. So you can see we've got the wings taken care of. And now we're onto the breast. And the breast can be a little bit hard. Some people might just stick a fork in it. And <laughs> Guilty, guilty. Right. Away. We would be very, I'm going to not, I'm not going to lie. My chicken looks nothing like this when I deconstruct it. It's, you'd be embarrassed. <laughs> so you can either use your hands or I like to take a knife and just kind of run along. There's a bone that runs down the center of the chicken. Okay. So I like to just take a knife and kind of find that bone and just guide the knife right along. So you're not cutting through it. You're just, no, I'm okay. just guiding. And there's a bone right here that we're running that knife across okay and then because this is still warm it just peels right away wow. from that but you can utilize all of this bird so super if you wanted to just have chicken yeah. breast for dinner you could slice it up and put it on a salad you have wonderful chopped salad kits that you can buy so it makes okay. lunches quick and easy too but as i said there's so much meat on these these birds you can get easily two to three meals out of rotisserie chicken cool so chicken like from a protein standpoint is like it's pretty lean right yeah so your breast is going to be your leanest cut of the rotisserie chicken um and then your dark meat is going to have a little bit more fat in it but by reducing that skin you still get all the flavor that the skin packs in mm. without adding in too much fat so and we didn't have to cook it no nope. the that's the hard part <laughs> and always don't forget that back side of the bird so many oh. people will just throw that away but there's a lot of good meat on there too so you can see the chunks of meat that you just yeah. come right off of that bird perfect and you mentioned to me before the show one of our other shows on hstv what the hack show yes. Those yes. tips for shredding up your rotisserie chicken super easy yeah there's um a tip on what the hack you can actually use a hand mixer you put um a paper plate. Well, I'm gonna. You might have to go and, and double check this on the actual the actual link on hstv.com. But you put the paper plate um, with the hand mixer um, so that it prevents splatter, and then you put the the chicken in the bowl, and then kind of use that mixer on low, and it kind of does a little bit of that chopping for you, um, which is kind of nice too. Yeah, super yeah. convenient. All right, so we have our bird all deboned here. We could take a little more time. There's more meat on there, definitely, yeah. but you can see didn't take very yeah, long. Right. I can use this to make chicken. like a soup or something too. Yeah, absolutely. We get a great chicken stock for a veggie yeah. soup. That's awesome. Great. Awesome. So Jen, we had a question come in um, about removing the skin. They may, they may have just joined a little late. So you did remove the skin. Yep. Remove the skin off of that chicken. If you wanted to do that, you leave it on, you could, but for our purposes to try and lower that fat content and keep it as healthy as possible, we went ahead and did that. Okay, great. And we have a question from Joan. She's asking, is there a nutritional benefit to white or dark meat? I think everything in moderation. Um, obviously your white is your leanest cut. So if you're really focusing on heart health, okay. um, we do have just the breast where you can buy just the rotisserie chicken breast at Haven. So that is a great option for people who are watching their cholesterol levels or heart health. Um, you could absolutely choose that option as well. Okay, great. 
Okay, so what's our first recipe? So first recipe, like I said, in the Midwest, we get really stuck on meat and potatoes, but that's not the only thing you can do with rotisserie chicken. So you can jazz this up and make it a really fun meal for the family. Okay. So keeping my plate in mind, we have about two and a half cups of our chopped rotisserie chicken in the skillet here. Awesome. And I'm going to have you go ahead and add in our first ingredient. Oh boy. So right we're adding <laughs> the Gustari Vita Alfredo sauce. And some of that? you at okay. home may be thinking, Alfredo sauce? Really? So the Gustari Vita brand is awesome because it has a few ingredients and they do a good job at keeping health in focus. But the biggest takeaway is everything in moderation. So this is a lower sodium, lower fat option than some of your other Alfredo sauce. Yeah, I wouldn't think um, that's a good point. Like sometimes I think when we're thinking about being healthy, we go to extremes. Like I can't eat any carbs. And obviously everyone has their own diet preference, but the moderation thing is really important. That's a good tip. Yep, absolutely. So we'll get that okay. jar out of the way. We can save that. So we're going to kind of just toss this up here. So we have our dairy component and we have our protein component. And next we're going to add in our grains. So we have cooked up about half of a box of whole wheat penne, and we're gonna add that to the pan here. Okay, so whole wheat penne versus like a, like a white noodle. <laughs> yeah. So, like white flour? <laughs> yeah. So as we're, like, we're always trying to get people to eat those whole grains. Not everybody likes whole grains. Some people are celiac or gluten intolerant and they can't tolerate the whole wheat or the wheat option. Okay. So there is a variety of great options that we have at Hy-Vee. One of my favorite options, we have Bond Pasta. It's a great substitute. You can find okay. that in the health market. It is, wow. yeah. um, it is a chickpea-based pasta, and it's a great source of protein and fiber. So cool. it's a good, great option. The other added benefit, if you didn't want to do the chicken at all, you could just put your sauce straight on it. So Gustari Vita also has some awesome red sauce option okay cool um, my personal favorite is the tomato basil flavor uh but that would be a great option too if you had a dairy allergy mm. or you didn't want to do the alfredo you could absolutely substitute in the tomato basil okay pasta sauce as well so we're gonna go ahead and stir that up could i change this up and do it with like a macaroni noodle absolutely the, okay. the shape does not matter so whatever you have available in your pantry will work just fine. Great. If you're trying to get the kids to get some extra veggies in and you want to be sneaky, you can also try like the veggie pasta. So there's several options available in that pasta aisle okay. to satisfy any of the needs that you might have. So we have a question from Georgie. Um, she's asking, is there a, a way to make this dairy free? And you just mentioned that, um, you sorry, Vita, but what if, what if yep. someone's looking for like a creamy type sauce? Yeah, so there's several um, vegan options in the health market, too. You could absolutely make your own, okay. um, but there are definitely options available for that at, at, okay. at your local high Great. Now, our last ingredient, this is a super simple recipe. We want to incorporate veggies from the My Plate into this. So we are using some broccoli florets. Now, most people think broccoli florets, they think, man, that's a lot of work to cook that up. Mm -hmm. Well, Heidi has these awesome broccoli florets that you can find in the produce department. They're already cut up, they're already washed up. You can stick this whole bag in the microwave and in four minutes, you have your broccoli done. Nice. Now, I like to put this in with my pasta so that it's all incorporated, has the nice sauce on it. Okay. You could serve it on the side as well. If you don't like broccoli, you could substitute with any vegetable or even pair it with a side salad. So we're just gonna add that broccoli. I like, right I like adding it in, that kind of camouflages it a little bit. Yeah. Or you some, can cut it up smaller maybe. Yeah, it some nice, a nice color too. Okay. What would if you like you said if you didn't like broccoli, what would what would you another vegetable that you might recommend that would pair nicely with this? You could substitute in carrots, you could substitute in really any vegetable would work. I would probably pair it with a side salad, some spinach, or you could throw it, you could throw in some kale if you wanted. Ooh, kale. That's a dirty word. <laughs> <laughs> Everything thinking about the resolutions this time of year and trying to incorporate new vegetables. Yeah, so. that's true. All right, so that is all complete. And you know, the last thing I would do to make that a full my plate meal is to pair it with some fruit. So okay. uh, I, I would pair it with berries. I love some strawberries this time of year. So strawberries or blueberries, whatever you have available, just to add that pop of color. Nice. 
What, what do they say? Eat, eat the rainbow? Yes. Eat the rainbow. Get all those vitamins and minerals. And so. by they, I mean dietitian. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Great. I'm going to set that meal aside. So, Athena, you ask a question, will the ingredient and recipe list be up for this? We absolutely will be sharing that on our, on our Facebook page for sure for you to check out later. Okay. So, recipe number two. We've got extra chicken left from that monstrous rotisserie chicken. What, what else do you have in store for us? So recipe number two, we are gonna make some chicken burrito bowls. So these are a little bit more work because there's more steps to them, but what I like about this is, you know, coming from a family perspective, you got people who like different things. So we are gonna go ahead and make this a meal that people can make their own. So maybe okay. the kids don't like beans or somebody doesn't like salsa, somebody likes it really spicy, this is a really easy um, go-to meal. So we've gone ahead and we've warmed up our chicken here. And to that mixture, we're gonna add in some low sodium, or excuse me, some less sodium taco seasoning. Now you could absolutely make your own taco seasoning with cumin and chili powder, garlic powder, but we're trying to cook smarter, not harder. That's so great. we're just gonna go ahead and use the taco seasoning packet. Okay. I'm only gonna use about half the packet because I don't need a ton of seasoning to come from this, but you could feel free to spice it up as much as you wanted at home. Okay. So. I'll have you go ahead and mix this up. Okay. We're going to add in about a fourth of a cup of water just to give it a little bit of juice to, to combine. Well. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Nadir. So you've mentioned a couple times, Jen, about sodium. Is that, um, I know salt adds a lot of flavor, but is there, what's, what's the harm, I guess, or, or benefit of looking for low sodium things? So a lot of us eat way too much sodium. The average American eats two to three times the recommended amount of sodium in a day. Um, American Heart Association recommends that we get 2,300 milligrams or less of sodium per day. Wow. Okay. We're shopping a lot of processed or pre-prepared foods. They've already got sodium in them. So just doing our part to limit them where we can. Okay. So it's added already in some of the stuff we might get in a can or like that packet you, that we just yeah. mixed in. Okay. How'd I do? Is that okay? Uh, so okay. we have our <laughs> mixture. All stirred up and it's all ready to assemble our burrito bowls. Mm -hmm. So um, there are a lot of options when it comes to burrito bowls. You could put it with some brown rice, which is what we're going to do. We've cooked up some instant brown rice. Um, you could put it on a tortilla. Huh? My personal favorite, I like to use the Mission Carb Balance tortillas. These are a great low carb option that taste great. And the sun-dried tomato basil is fabulous. So definitely encourage you to give that a try. But for the carb conscious, you could put this over a bed of cauliflower rice, which you can find now in the produce department. You can also find it in the freezer section. So there again, some easy, quick pop it in the microwave and you're done. Yeah, smarter, not harder. <laughs> we also have Uncle Ben's rice in a bag, which you could pop in the microwave too. So if you make this and then the next day you're taking it to work for leftovers, You've got easy, quick options to get that rice that's nice and hot. Great. So we're gonna. What if I didn't want the? What if I could I use like lettuce or spinach like as, as my base? Absolutely, you can keep it up and make it into a good salad too. Ooh. All right. So we're gonna bring over some of our other toppings for our burrito bowl here. All right. So, so like I, I know that, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. I got I got people are getting a like, that. Um, um, this was. Let's just assume like an like a viewer would be watching this at home and like they buy this chicken but they don't eat it all right away, right? Like yeah. just prepare meals for later. So Joan has a question. How long um, will a rotisserie chicken keep in the fridge? So I would say probably once you've pulled it off the skin and or, and bones and gotten it all prepared, I would eat it probably within three to four days. Okay. It's not going to last that long because it's such a convenient option mm. and there's so many things you can do with it that I. There's no way it would stay that long in my refrigerator. <laughs> exactly. It's too convenient. So um, other toppings that we have to go with our chicken mixture here, we've got some salsa, which is great. It's going to give you some tomatoes. We have one of my favorite substitutions that we use frequently on Substitute Teacher, plain Greek yogurt. Great substitute for sour cream because it is lower in fat and it's also got some protein benefit to it. And are there dairy, just a... Be yeah. Are there dairy-free options yeah, for this? Absolutely. Um, so delicious. Height Hill. There's several different brands that have dairy-free yogurt options. Great. Uh, we also are going to use some black beans in today for our burrito bowls, and we're using the no salt added black beans. So they're again keeping the salt in mind because we don't really need that extra salt in our diet. 
You could substitute those for kidney beans or pinto beans, or bonzo beans. There's a lot of different options in that. And then another word could mean lentil. What's the difference between a bean and a lentil? So lentils are a little, <laughs> lentils are a little bit different, but they're similar family, similar benefits with all the protein and the fiber that they provide. So great for the people who are trying to increase their plant protein, to be more plant focused. So the bean and the lentil is more bulk. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Both are great options. Plant focus so means more, more fiber. fiber. Yep. Okay. Fiber and protein. Okay. Uh, another top, or another topping that we're using today, we're using the 2% milk cheddar cheese. And I want to point out that we're using sharp cheddar cheese today. The reason why we're using sharp cheddar is because, I don't know about you, but I love cheese. And I have a tendency to so <laughs> way too much cheese on food. And so sharp cheddar is going to give you all that cheese flavor without needing to go overboard on our topping. So we're going to put some of that on our bowls today as well. A good moderation tip. Absolutely. And then our other ingredient that I'm a huge fan of is avocados. Now, I know avocados aren't something that everyone loves and some people can't have them. I would love to have them. I'm actually allergic to avocado, which is kind of a strange allergy, but I hear so many great things about them. They are such a good source of fiber and other benefits. You know, they're a healthy fat. Did you know they're actually a fruit? Really? So they have a pit inside of them. So that's what makes them a pit or a fruit because they grow on trees. Well, okay. So on the my plate. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. I'm getting yeah. it. I'm getting it. <laughs> um, so right now we have the avocado. And did you know that avocados are actually one of the most accident causing fruits and vegetables? Like people like slice their hand open? Yeah. People slice their hand open. It's a common trip to the ER. So instead of using... <laughs> Instead of using a sharp knife, um, we're just going to use this handy dandy avocado tool, but you could also use a butter knife at home. And as long as your avocado is ripe, you could slice right into it. And you always like how it's right. Yeah, so if you um, pick up your avocado, which I should have done that before I started cutting, but if you pick up your avocado and you just give it a little pinch, it should squeeze lightly. Okay. So there's the avocado. Cool. Cool. Now, we don't need all of this avocado today, so we're going to leave the pit in this side, and this way it will preserve itself a little bit more in the refrigerator. Oh, great. So cover it with some saran wrap, stick it in the fridge, and it's ready to go in the morning for avocado toast or avocado on eggs. You could even take that leftover avocado, mix it with some rotisserie chicken, and make a chicken salad. Okay. So, lots of options with that. Nice. And then we can just simply slice into the rest of the avocado. And we've got our toppings ready. So we're ready to assemble our burrito bowls. Okay, I'll get the plates or the bowl. <laughs> Would you like the teal bowl or green bowl? I'll take the green bowl. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put some rice in mine. I don't know. Do you want rice in your bowl? Yes, please. That would be great. So keeping in mind portion size, we're going to do about half a cup to three-fourths of a cup of this brown rice in each bowl. So okay. remembering okay. that my plate and Seasons has some wonderful tips this month for how we need to use our hands. Yeah, I saw that in the latest um, issue, something about fists and thumbs and pinkies. Yep. And yep, so fists is a good way to kind of judge your fruits and vegetables on the correct portion size. Your thumb is good for about a tablespoon, so it's a common measurement for things like peanut butter. Okay. Be a healthy fat. And yeah. then the tip of your pinky from your first knuckle up is for things like butter. Mm. So smaller, like a one teaspoon size. Wow. That's a teaspoon? Yeah. Okay. So you so can I use guess your hand for the tool. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great tip. So my plate, my hand. <laughs> now a serving of your chicken is usually around three to four ounces. So we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of chicken in the, my bowl. Are you going to put chicken in your bowl? Yeah. Um, so I really, I'm like a big protein fan. So like, I'm just trying to think about Maybe a little bit more protein for me. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll put some chicken in your bowl. Now ah. feel free to take whatever topping you okay, use. Might go good in yours. I think I'm going to do some salsa. I'm a big fan of beans, so I want all that fiber. We don't get enough fiber. So I'm going to tap. Ooh. A mild salsa. I might even add some jalapenos. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a, I'm a big spice guy. You could also fan. jazz the rice up, add a little bit of lime juice and some like cilantro. Some. Absolutely. Okay. Ooh, that's another thing. Man, I'm just like the worst. <laughs> I, I think I have that gene where cilantro makes it, things taste like soap. Well, some, not everybody loves cilantro. So absolutely personalize these. You know, add hot sauce, jalapenos. You can even add like Mexican corn on top of there. Yeah. Whatever works for your family. But super great, super easy recipe because 
you can make it your own. So, okay. you know, potatoes don't like beans. You can yeah. they can leave them out. If somebody really likes cheese. That's they awesome. can add extra. So you can't go wrong with these burrito bowls, and they are so convenient. So, so instead of my, we have burrito ooh, bowl. That's night. fun. How's my portion control so far? That looks great. That looks great. That's yeah. great. I mean, I might add a little bit of cheese. Um, Jen, on that avocado, I know I don't know if you're gonna add that to yours. Yeah. Um, what's why does keeping the pit in there? keep that fresh over. you know i don't have a good answer for that okay. that's just one of those tips that i've learned over the years okay. and i'm not really sure okay cool but i trust you <laughs> <laughs> i promise it works so i'm gonna add a little avocado to my bowl here so mm -hmm. it's got a nice little bit of color so nice. we're all ready to dig in oh These that's look pretty awesome. awesome i'm getting hungry you guys see that that looks great if only they could smell it right yeah for sure <laughs> We can't, we can't eat it with our masks on, but we can later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and once we're socially distanced. Yeah, so absolutely. awesome. Well, this is so great, Jen. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, you thanks guys for having me. Some great tips. Um, now I, I know how to properly disassemble a rotisserie chicken. So that's great. Um, and I, I learned some things about portion control and a little bit of, a little bit of everything. I, I, the salt tip was good. Um, if you guys have any other questions, make sure um, to just send them our way on HSTV. Um, you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram at Helpful Smiles TV. Um, and you can, you can watch more Helpful Smiles live coming up in February. We have one featuring um, Chef Eddie, which will be super great. Um, and Jen has her own show called Substitute Teacher Kids Edition, where she shares a lot of helpful tips about making substitutions and helping to feed your family. So thanks again, Jen, for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, everyone stay out there. Thanks. Have a great night.